Hey guys, Ken here with Hobby Harvest. I'm out here today on the southeastern Wisconsin food plot to put down the fall forage seeds. Um, as you can see behind me, I have a bit of a buckwheat fail. Now, this buckwheat should look thick and lush and be choking out everything growing under it, but it's not doing that anymore because it's already gone to seed. So the buckwheat itself didn't fail. It did as exactly as it was supposed to. The fail was that I planted it too early. So remembering back, I planted this buckwheat like the last week of May. Now, ideally, I should have planted it about the middle of June. You want to plant it about six to seven weeks before you plan on planting your fall forage seeds. That way the buckwheat will be at the ideal height, the ideal thickness and everything. It won't have gone to seed yet when you plant your fall seed mix. So I'm going to have a couple issues here I have to overcome. My strategy hasn't changed. I'm still going to throw my seed down into the standing buckwheat. I'm going to crimp or knock over the buckwheat and roll it flat. And then I'm going to spray glyphosate on top of it. Now, some weeds have started coming up inside of the plot since the buckwheat isn't choking them out anymore. Well, that one spraying of glyphosate should kill those weeds also and also kill off the the buckwheat if the crimping doesn't kill it. I'm then hoping that my seed will come up as normal. Now the issue is there's still a lot of buckwheat seed in here now too because the buckwheat went to seed. Depending on the seeding rate that could be bad for me. It could also be good for me. So the deer here in southeastern Wisconsin did not eat this buckwheat much all summer long but they also have egg fields all over around here. The deer on my northwestern Wisconsin food plot kept that buckwheat grazed down all summer long. But as I like to say up there, there isn't an egg field within a, a county of where my food plot is. So the buckwheat up there was a much bigger attraction than it was down here. So they ate it up there during the summer. They did not eat it during the summer down here. That's going to change down here once we head into fall. So in a couple months, every leaf on every tree out here is going to fall off. All of these native grasses and other plants are going to die off. And the only thing the deer are really going to be left with out here is this food plot and any egg fields that are left standing. But those egg fields will also then get harvested and the deer are going to be left with just this little sweet piece of candy here. And this should be the number one food attraction for them in the area. That being said, if there's a little bit of buckwheat growing in it, they will then eat the buckwheat at that time also, along with the other things I'm going to plant in here. My only issue is I will have to keep an eye on it because buckwheat is a smother crop. And if the amount of seed that is in here naturally is too thick, it will choke out my other plants. So I will have to keep an eye on it. This plot is only about, I think it's a little less than a half acre. So if I do have to come out here by hand and either pull buckwheat or spot spray the buckwheat in order to kill it so that my other stuff can grow, I'll do that. And this is something I'll learn for next year. No, not to plant my buckwheat until the middle of June. Um, but if the buckwheat does not show or isn't thick enough to choke out my other plants I'll probably just leave it grow out here and it'll just be an extra diversity in with the other food that I'm planting here um, another thing I'll have going for me is buckwheat is definitely a summer crop so as we head into fall I don't expect these seeds that are gonna get planted now to grow as vigorously as this first crop of buckwheat did. Because we're heading into fall, we're getting colder temperatures, the sun's getting lower in the sky, this second planting of buckwheat will not produce as thick and as lush of a crop as the first one did, which will help my other fall forage plants to grow through the buckwheat anyway. So it's just something I'm gonna have to keep an eye on and hopefully won't uh, need to come out here and do too much uh, manual labor of pulling the buckwheat out to let my other stuff grow. So what the goal is for today is I'm going to throw seed into the standing buckwheat. I have um, forage soybeans, forage peas, and oats which are going to go on half of the plot and the other half of the plot is going to get a brassica blend. Um, turnips, rape, radishes, um, I think there's some kale and some other things in that mix. Um, 
reason you don't want to plant those together is the same th uh, issue with the buckwheat. The, the beans, the peas, and the oats will outcompete the brassicas if you were to plant them together. So you need to keep them separate. The brassicas can't have all those bigger plants growing on top of them, choking them out. Um, and then I'll have to remember that because you really don't want to plant brassicas on the same part of the plot. Three years in a row, I'll probably switch them every, every year, flip-flop back and forth if I do plant brassicas on this field next year. Um, once the seed's seeded in, I'm going to take the roller behind the four-wheeler and roll everything down flat. Then I'm going to take the sprayer on the four-wheeler and spray glyphosate on top of everything. And that should be it. I'll, I'll be done. I'll just be out here to monitor the uh, growth of the plants out here, make sure there's nothing else I need to really do, uh, monitor that buckwheat growth, and just check trail cams. Um, I actually did check the trail cameras today and the buck that I call Fortnite did quite a bit of growing up. I have some nice videos of him. He's at least a 12 pointer. He might be, depending on how, how many kickers and stickers you want to count, he's bigger than that. I don't know how long those are going to end up being, if they'll be one inch once uh, he's out of velvet or not, but he is definitely a very nice buck. So. I'm hoping that this fall forage mix really brings him into the area right now. The reason why I call him Fortnite is that I've been seeing him about every two weeks. He's And they're always uh, nighttime pictures, which this time of year just tells me that he's he's in the area. He comes around. He's probably living a couple hundred yards off this way, uh, munching on corn and soybeans right now. There's fields off this way. Uh, that's the way he came from. Um, but he does relate to this area. He checks it out every once in a while. He hit my uh, mock scrape over here. And once this is a fall forage mix and once this is that piece of candy in the neighborhood, I really think he'll start relating to this. We do know that deer go through sort of a shift in about a month or two. Um, where, So where they are now is not necessarily where they're going to be in like September, October, November. So it's good that I'm seeing him about every two weeks. I'm hoping to be seeing him more consistently in a few months. Um, and this food plot should help to make that happen. So let's get to work. All right, well, that actually worked really well. Um, that roller really knocked down all the buckwheat and all the other weeds out here too. There's a few stragglers, but for the most part, it really knocked everything down, and that's what I was going for. Um, then I sprayed it. Um, if you do spray directly on your seed, it can stunt the growth of the seed, but the idea of spraying after seeding when we do it this way is that we're spraying the thatch we're not spraying the seed so like we're not actually spraying enough water that it's like soaking all the way through this future thatch here down into the seed because when we seed it into the standing buckwheat it went all the way down and touched the soil then when we rolled it and then roll and then driving over it with the four-wheeler to spray and everything else that really squishes all of those seeds down into the uh, dirt so they really have a lot of uh, seed to soil contact they then now have this nice layer of thatch covering them and it got sprayed so it's not going to like stand back up and come back to life and out compete the seeds when they're in their infancy trying to germinate and grow. So this is effectively just going to turn into a bed of straw on top of the seed. Like if you were going to plant grass seed in your yard and you, were, you would put a straw on top of it because it keeps the moisture in there and it helps to protect it when it's you know just popping out of the ground. It'll have this nice layer of cover, but then once it gets established enough, once it's a couple days old, it'll very easily peek right through this thatch out here. And then this thatch is just gonna rot and decay and become what is called green manure. And as much as it may, you may think it's this top layer, the thatch itself, that's gonna add um, compost to the plot and it will, but a lot of that's just gonna dry out and blow away and be compost wherever it blows to. The actual um, benefit from putting the buckwheat in here as a summer cover crop is the root system it establishes. So that root system's now also going to die because the plant was killed on top of it 
and that will decay in the soil where the root system of the seeds I just planted is going to start growing and it will eat up all of those nutrients from the root system of the buckwheat. So that's the advantage of putting in a summer cover crop like A, it competes well with your weeds so that you shouldn't have a bunch of weeds to deal with. I still did because I planted the buckwheat too early. Um, but B, you're adding that green manure to your plot so it really helps kickstart your fall food plot um, in a more natural way. But um, that being said, it's you still could have plowed this or tilled this or cultivated this, um, turned the dirt over sev several times to deal with your weeds. You could have just sprayed the weeds not all summer and not done a uh, summer cover crop um, and then planted into the soil straight at this point instead of having this cover. That would still work. Now, an additional advantage to this though is while I was doing this, I had noticed about a dozen turkeys over here, over in the alfalfa field, eyeing up what I was doing. If they were to come and hit this up when this was just soil with seed in it, they would pick right through it, scratch right through it, and eat all of the seed out of here, especially if there's 12 of them. Um, and you'd be left with very few seeds left to germinate. This thatch on top now, all that seeds buried down in the dirt, got pushed down into the dirt, and there's all this thatch on top. So even if they were gonna come and try to scratch through this to try to pick the seeds out, it's gonna be a lot harder for them to do it. I'm not saying they won't try it. I'll have the cameras out here. I'll see if they, if they do it or not. But it's definitely gonna make it more difficult for those turkeys to get out here and eat up all the seed I just put down. So looking off to the west, I can see that the skies are looking kind of troubled, which is good. We definitely want rain at this point. The, it's probably been an hour since I sprayed at this point, so that's that's all good and done. It can get rained on at this point. It's not gonna hurt anything. Um, the reason why I did plant right now is because it was supposed to rain this afternoon and tonight. Looks like we might actually start getting rain down here maybe in 15 minutes, so I'm gonna have to wrap this up, get the camera where it's not gonna get wet, but um, there's also rain in the forecast like almost every day, a chance for the next 10 days or whatever. So you definitely wanna wait for that to plant so that you do have uh, immediate rain in the forecast. If you don't, your seed will still sit in the soil and wait to germinate until you get rain. So it's not the end of the world if you plant with no rain in the forecast, it's just you do put yourself at risk for things like turkeys and mice and whatever coming through and eating up all your seed before it gets a chance to grow. Um, also, we're obviously timing our planting time with the stage the plants will be at come hunting season. So the reason why we don't plant these in the spring or the summer like you would your garden is because we want these plants to still be young and tender when it comes time um, for the hunting season because that is the time that the plants are most attractive to the deer. Um, you could plant soybeans in the spring, they'd be old and the deer would probably maybe still be eating on them, but not as much so as this is going to be that nice piece of candy that they want to come and get over everything else in the area. Alright guys, so I hope this really sums up um, what I'm doing out here. I am really just done out here at this point. I'll continue to monitor it, like I said, with the buckwheat. If that becomes an issue, I still need to get a stand out here or a blind out here. Um, with lumber prices the way they were, I haven't bought the lumber to do it yet, but they've cut, the prices have come down, so uh, that's going to be one of my next projects. Ideally, I w would want it out here already so the deer get used to it sooner than later, but I'm also not going to pay what lumber prices were to build the stand I want to. So um, we'll have that coming up. Um, continue to come out here and check trail cams, make sure this is getting some rain. Um, basically babysit it make sure everything's going how it's supposed to but at this point we are all set and ready for the season as soon as it gets here